So you say, okay, well, fine. <laughs> uh, why is that interesting? I forgot. Okay. Okay, this is the really non-intuitive part. Okay, so one thing that's a little unintuitive is you think you need a pressure difference. That's because you're used to thinking about viscosity and loss, but you don't under our simple assumptions. Let's look at something even more, a little bit strange. So I'm trying to give you these so that when you're doing the homework, your intuition won't lead you astray, okay? Gotta make sure I get to the big point, though. Okay, let's have liquid flow through a Venturi tube. That's this thing you'll see in the book. And we're going to do some things the book does, and we're not going to do some others because it makes me very upset. Okay, so let's just look at the Venturi tube first. Here we go. It typically looks like this. You've got a big area over here, and it necks down to a small area over there, like that. All right? Okay, that's exciting. So this is one. It has a cross-sectional area. A1, there's pressure one over here. It's flowing at V1 over here. All right, so what we were saying we have flow this way. This is A2. It's at pressure two, and we have V2, okay? So we just want to know what's going on. Right? So we want to say, where's the pressure higher, et cetera. So first, let's say, which is faster? One or, let's see, which region is faster? Which region is faster? Hmm. Uh, let's see. For that, I would use continuity. A1, V1 equals A2, V2. Right? A1, V1 equals A2, V2. Uh, I'd say, well, then let's solve for, oh, I don't know, V2. V2 is A1 over A2, V1. A1 over A2, is that a big number or a little number? It's a big number. Um, so V2 is faster. And I think that part you're okay with. You could visualize that, right? If I have some fluid going into this thing, it has to squeeze down to there. Oh my God, it goes really fast, right? That's perfectly intuitive. Okay, fine. Uh, where is the pressure lower? It's not. Is pressure lower? Where's the pressure lower? Think about videos you've seen the little blood flowing through the capillaries, right? It goes real fast through the capillaries when it doesn't go so fast through here. But where's the pressure lower? Which side? Try your intuition. See if you can figure out which side the pressure is lower. Um, well, now we want to go to uh, Bernoulli's flow law, right? And just say, I don't know, let's just apply the flow law, see what happens, okay? Here's our slipstream, no, no, our jet stream, no. Our, our streamline, thank you. I don't use that term very much, okay? Okay, so we're gonna take this side and say P1 plus rho GY1 plus one half rho V1 squared. Sometimes I tell people don't think, okay? Don't think on these, just apply this in two places. Don't think about it until you're done writing it down. Just don't even look over there. P1 plus Y, okay. Now on this side, don't think. P2, don't think. Rho, G, how high is it? Y2, oh my God. Plus one half rho, how fast is it going? V2, done, okay, don't think about it. Okay, <laughs> that's how you do these problems. Um, now you gotta think about it. Say, okay, can anything go away? The potential term can go away, right? They're at the same height. I didn't draw any height difference in these two things. Uh, y1 equals y2, same. They're not zero, they're the same, right? So that makes them go away. Cool. Um, what are we gonna do with what's left? What are we gonna do with what's left? Any relationships between what's left? Ah, the velocities, right? So we could say uh, pressure at one plus one half rho V1 squared is the pressure at two plus one half rho V2 squared. We could wrap V2 in terms of V1. Look, I happen to have done it up here. It's almost like I planned that or something. A1 over A2, I actually didn't because I don't really plan these ahead, squared V1 squared, 
right? Like that. Interesting. How are the y's the same? Somebody also, so make it clear, I didn't explain this super clear, is these are from potential energy, mgh. So we're just saying, let's say this is y equals 0. Or let's say y equals the ground is down here. y equals 0, then this is y equals, say, 2 meters. But this one is also 2 meters. So rho g 2 meters, rho g 2 meters. It's the same on each side. Okay? Or you could call it 0 if you wanted to. That's because I drew it horizontal. Yeah. Okay, so we look at this thing and say, are the pressures the same? Instead of getting into a bunch of algebra, let's just look at it here. This is some constant value, isn't it? It's some value. It's like what we say here. This thing has to be a constant. So there's your constant. Now, what is this side going to do? A1 over A2 is a big number, right? A1 over A2. Um, Right, so this is bigger. So what does this have to be? Smaller. Wah, 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 wah. Right, so this is small pressure. And this is high pressure. What? Perfect. I love it. Somebody went, what? Not just me. Somebody else did it. Yeah. So when the flow goes into the narrow opening, the pressure goes down. For real, it actually does. And the reason is, so the reason that's counterintuitive is you're thinking of a gas. Okay, yeah, so, and the relief. This is, I'm going to get emotional. Okay, so if you were to blow gas into this, yeah, you would compress the gas and make the pressure go up because you're forcing it into this little volume. But this is a liquid. It's an incompressible liquid, okay? All it can do is keep the same volume and here it flows faster. Now, why does the pressure have to be less because it flows faster? Yeah, I don't know. I can't answer that. Oh, there's just, it's because of Bernoulli's equation. No. Uh, the real reason, if you really wanted to get it real deep, is you think about the work the pressure is doing on it. Ooh, and you have to conserve energy, so it's speeding up. Oh, it's a gaining kinetics, so there must be some negative work done on it, so the pressure differential must change in the right way. So you could get there. It's not worth it. Okay. Um, I can prove this to you, sort of, but I'm going to break my own rule. Okay, now... What upsets me greatly in these problems, okay, good. What upsets me greatly in these problems is then your stupid book will say, let's put a tube on here, and let's put a manometer, and let's look at how the pressure is different on the two sides. You can't do that. You can't do that. Why can't you do that? What rule have we broken here? Because then they're doing, oh, well, it's a gas, and then this is a fluid, this is a liquid down here. But we just said you can't do this with a gas. It has to be incompressible. So you're not going to get any problems with any stupid Venturi tubes and fluids and all that bullshit. Right. Your problems will be all liquid, okay? But now for a demonstration, I will do it with air, okay? <laughs> so, the, <laughs> so these rules do kind of slightly uh, occur with air. It's, the reason they do that is air is compressible, but a lot of the laws come out similar, okay? But quantitatively, they don't come out correct at all, okay? But it bothers me that they make these assumptions at the beginning of the chapter, and then they give you homework where they totally break them with air. But the one way we can demonstrate it with air is this. So ping pong ball in a very old thing with a very old thing here. I have not had a tetanus shot since I was 18, but this is probably going to work out. Okay, so, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to blow the ping pong ball out of the uh, cone or out of the funnel. Okay, I didn't blow hard enough. Okay, I've got to sneak up on it. You ready? Watch this. Okay, that doesn't work. You can even, like, if you want to get a free point, right? So watch this. Here we go. Okay. What's happening here? How, why, why won't it fall out? But because if you think about the pressure, this is proof that the pressure goes the right... Oh, my God. Goes the right way, right? So you have your thingy here like this, and the gas flows very fast right here. So the pressure goes down, right? Wherever the gas flows fast, the pressure goes down. Here you have atmospheric pressure. So the net force, you can imagine, is down. And the little buzzing is it tries to go up and immediately gets pushed back down by the atmosphere. It'll never come out. If you want tetanus, you can come to this too. And my candle's done. So this is the new way we measure the length of the lecture. Here we go. So, okay, so I'll see you Thursday.